Solving acid-base problems is relatively simple if you know how to use a few basic equations. The first thing, of course, to do is to identify whether you have a strong acid or base or a weak acid or base. Strong acid-base problems are much simpler to solve because the concentrations that are given in the actual problems can be used as is, whereas in a weak acid or base problem, there's a little bit more manipulation that needs to go into the values in order for you to use them in a calculation. So this tutorial is going to focus on strong acid and base problems. There will be also a tutorial on weak acid-base problems that I will link in the description box as well as a general acid base uh, overview video. But let's go ahead and get started with, with uh, these few problems that will hopefully illustrate how we will calculate pH, pOH, H plus, and OH minus concentrations uh, using uh, two or three simple equations. So as I mentioned, the first thing to do is identify your acid or base, and in this case this is HCl, so it is an acid. And because it is a strong acid, then what we can assume is that when HCl dissociates, it dissociates 100% to form H plus and Cl minus. That means if this HCl has a concentration given as 0 0.059 molar, it will also make 0 0.059 molar H plus and 0 0.059 molar Cl minus. Of course, we don't care about the Cl, but what I am interested in is this concentration of H plus because it is a strong acid the concentration of the solution is also the concentration of H plus itself. So it's an easy plug into the pH equation, which is pH is equal to the negative log of H plus. Let's plug in the value negative log of 0 0.059 because that is the concentration of H plus as well as the solution. And the pH we will attain is as follows. So 0 0.059, hit the log button on your calculator, and you will reach a value of 1.229, etc. That is a negative. We will have to negate that negative because it's in our equation. And so 1.23, let's say, if we were to round, would be the value of our pH. Now this is much, much less than 14, much, much less than 7, so this is definitely an acidic pH, and since we have an acid, a strong acid at that, it makes good sense that it would have a relatively low pH. So pretty simple if you have a strong acid. Let's now try to reverse this equation. What if you were actually given the pH of a solution and you were asked to find the concentration of the hydrogen ion? So this question asks, what is the hydrogen ion concentration, meaning what is H plus concentration of HNO3 if the pH of that solution is 3.5? Now HNO3, of course, is an acid, so of course it would be composed of lots of H plus. It is a strong acid also. Again, that makes our calculation a lot simpler. Now since we are given pH and we require H plus concentration, rather than take the log, as we did in the first problem, we're going to take the anti-log. The anti-log basically is this 10 to the x button on your calculator. So let's see how we can solve for that. So the equation that we will use is H plus concentration, since we're solving for that, will be equal to 10 to the negative pH. So again, the negative here now belongs to the pH, and instead of log, of 10, we're using the base of 10. So H plus concentration is how much if our pH is 3.5 according to this problem. And don't forget your negative. So once again, we'll go to our calculator, plug in 3.5, use of course the negative key to make that negative 3.5, and then we'll use the 10 to the x function instead of the log function. And there we go. We get 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4. So H plus concentration actually is then equal to 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4. So pretty simple so far. Let's move on from acids and let's talk about bases and see how we can 
find either the hydrogen uh, ion concentration or the pH and help us find the hydroxide ion concentration or the pH from those values. So you can see here that we are dealing with magnesium hydroxide, which is a base. So first of all, let's identify that. It is a strong base. So again, the calculation will be relatively simple. And from there, we are going to solve for the pH concentration. So let's take a look at the dissociation of MgOH2 before we get started. Again, since this is a strong base, we're going to ionize it to form magnesium 2 plus and two hydroxides. That's very important to keep your coefficients balanced. Two hydroxides on the reactants and two hydroxides on the products. So that means whatever concentration magnesium hydroxide is, which is 0 0.015, should also be the concentration of the two products that are formed, just as it was up for the HCl example. Now let's take a look and see what happens. When magnesium hydroxide dissociates, it will form 1Mg, which will be worth 0 0.015, and it will form hydroxide, which is also worth 0 0.015. But notice that we have two hydroxides, not just one, so it's actually two times 0 0.015, which is the equivalent of 0 0.03 three different because we do have two hydroxides. Had this been just regular NaOH, that would dissociate to form Na plus and OH minus. So if this was 0.015 molar, this would be 0.015 molar, and the hydroxide would be 0.015 molar. But because we have two hydroxides up here, we get double the amount of hydroxide. So not just 0.015, but 0.015 times two or 0.03. Now this is, of course, the concentration of hydroxide, right? So how can we use hydroxide ion concentration to help us calculate pH? Because remember, pH is equal to the negative log of H plus. Well, we don't have H plus, but what we do have is hydroxide. Now, alternatively, we could use the pOH equation. pOH is equal to the negative log of, you guessed it, OH minus. Since we do have OH minus concentration, this is probably a better equation to use in this problem than the pH equation. We will need to find pH eventually because that's what the problem asked for, but let's take it one step at a time. Since we have hydroxide ion concentration and this equation is available, let's go ahead and plug into that. So pOH is equal to the negative log of 0 0.03. And if we use, again, our trusty calculator, 0.03 is the concentration. Let's take the log of that. We get negative 1.522. Let's then negate that negative because it's right here in our problem, in our equation. And there we go. We get 1.52 that is positive. So 1.52 is the pOH. All right. So. Let's go back to the problem. The problem asked us for the pH of this, pH of this solution. What we have currently solved for is pOH. So how can we convert pOH to pH? Well, we need to use one more equation. So this was equation one. We need one more equation, which is pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Since we know pOH is 1.52, we know that we can plug that in. So pH plus 1.52 is 14. 14 minus 1.52 should give us pH. So 14 minus 1.52 gives us 12.48. And that is the pH of the solution. Now this is much, much higher than 7 which definitely puts it in the basic range. It's very close to 14, which is the end of the pH scale. So that does make sense. It's much higher than 7, which makes it a base. And it's a pretty high pH, which makes it a very strong base, which, of course, MgOH2 is. So our answer does check. If you um, have additional 
problems that you'd like to solve or questions regarding where we're getting the pH, pOH, and the pH plus pOH equations, as well as how to go and solve for the reverse equations, such as H plus here, which we could also do OH minus, just the same, 10 to the negative pOH. If you're wondering about where to find this equation, this equation, and the three that are listed here, this guy, this guy, and this guy, you can check out the acid base uh, overview calculations video that is linked in the description box.